Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. I'm Weston Palmer. Let's get started. The other day someone was asking me about clustering and I realized that I hadn't done a video on clustering and there is a, a reason for that. One is I don't use it very often. Clustering is an option that you have when you come over to the analytics tab. There's an option called clustering here. You click it and you bring it over and just drop it on the cluster and it creates a cluster for you it tells you the measures that you are using or that were used to develop that cluster and you can change this one's only got two but if you were to change this to four or if you just once you've got that how do you get rid of it just delete it and it'll go back to automatic so what's happening? Well, there's a lot of math behind it. Is it's taking data points. This is from Tableau's um, help section. It's taking all your various data points and it's finding a center for it. And it's trying to minimize the distance from those centers. And that's how the clusters are developed. And it's intended to cluster similar parts or most similar or most uh, correlated data points together. Coming back here, we've got measures. We also had some other categories and for the longest time I thought if you had uh, dimensions listed as well on the details that would be taken into account. Uh, they aren't. And here's why I don't like it so much. This one actually looks a little bit better as four clusters. When I'm looking at this data here I may want to break it out by those parts that are highest quantity or greatest sales or some combination of the two. What you can do is when, after, when you do the clustering, it's going to automatically show up on color. If you have something already on color, it's going to remove it and put clusters there and it'll put whatever you had on color as a detail. You can come down here to describe clusters and you can see where the number of items per cluster what the sum of the profit is or the center points for those different buckets and so you can this is another way that you can get a little bit more information about the different clusters the other nice thing about this is once you've got clusters already created you can left click and drag it over to your data pane and it'll create a group and it gives you a default group but i'm just going to call this uh going to rename it product group, product segment maybe. And now that will work just like any other group. And you can bring the product segment under columns and bring the sales under rows. And there you go. It, you use it just like any other group. And so you could use it throughout your uh, dashboards and file. The other thing you can do is maybe we'll do it over here, product segment edit the group and so you're editing just like a group and you can come in here and rename this if you wanted open this up and you can see all the different products that are in there along with the other product subcategory and segment I'm going to show you another example of using clustering this is some Airbnb data. I was looking at doing some customer segmentation. We have the maximum number of any single stay for that particular guest and the number of visits that guest made. And you can see I've got those up on the column in the row. What you see over here under detail is a calculation for the percent with children, percent with infants, percent with pets, um, and how many properties they visited. So now when I bring over cluster and drop it, you can see there's a number of clusters already identified, five, and it has all these variables included. And if for some reason you don't want to include one of those variables, you can just click and remove. So we've got five clusters there. Maybe that's too many. Uh, let's go ahead and change that. We're going to change this to just four. And we got four clusters. 
here's my biggest issue with this. I've gone through and created a segment, customer segment, guest segment, I think is what I called it. Yeah, guest segment. And I'm going to drop this on shape. And what you'll see is that this, there's a disconnect. Not that there's a disconnect, but there's a difference in how Tableau grouped items and how I grouped items. All right. Uh, and I am not a statistics expert. So those of you out there who are more of a data scientist, really into statistics, you could probably argue that the way I've done it is improper and that the clustering that Tableau did is more appropriate. I am going to show you the formula that I used though. And what I did, here's this data. I basically said, if the guest is more than one, if they have more than one stay, I'm going to call that a frequent guest. And so that's all the circles there. For Airbnb, those are people that you want to understand who they are anyway. Then I said, if it was more than eight nights, if that was the maximum stay, um, now you're getting into, in my opinion, not so much a vacation stay as you're doing a, like a long-term stay. Maybe you're, it's a hospital stay. Maybe you're visiting. Uh, and then we had vacation. That was four nights. So essentially you're going between four and eight nights. Those are people that are, it's not just an overnight deal, but they're staying a little while. I'm thinking Disneyland or some other uh, tourist attraction that they may stay a couple days to see the area. And then anything else, and you can see those are the pluses, is I called it transactional. But I think it's a better uh, customer segment, better way to look at the data than perhaps the way that it's being clustered here. Because you're this would say, let me get rid of this. If you're trying to target a, a person, uh, the people that are have 10 night stays, 22 night stay, and somebody that has has come and stayed twice for three days or three night, two nights, should all be considered the same. And that just doesn't feel right to me. Looking at yellow, blue. So this clustering where it might be, and what happens is, let's take another look. Part of that issue is all these other items under the dimension. So if we got rid of some of these other items, things might change. And they do. You can see this clustering too is more of what I would call, um, I don't know what I, I forgot what I call it, frequent guest. Four is more of the long, long term stay. And so when you have to be careful transactional I had different numbers for the cutoffs, but so now you can start to see by adding all these other elements, you get different looks in your segments. And so that's something you need to be careful of. Now it's under automatic and now we have another category in here under two. So just something to be aware of when you're dealing with segments. And that's one of the reasons I find it's for me. I feel like I have more control and I have a better understanding of the the segments or the clusters when I've got using just your basic if then statement and you can make these more elaborate. You can have multiple criteria in there as well. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, especially if you're using clustering. Uh, how do you find that it works and how are you using it? Thanks for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. Hit subscribe and the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. And check out my other videos to learn even more about Tableau.